Miguel is coming. Miguel, I met Miguel uh, last week in Seattle for the first time and was like, I know you from the internet. We've definitely interacted on Twitter before. And then he told me that he's the uh, only designer on VS Code. And a lot of their design is, is done in open source. So we can now listen to him and see uh, what he's been like, or what he means by that. So let's welcome the entire design team of VS Code, Miguel. Hello, everyone. Um, as Miguel said, my name is Miguel. I'm a designer at Microsoft. And today, I'd like to begin by asking the question of what is open source design? Now, we've heard about open source and software, open source in the tech industry. How does this apply to design? And what does it really mean for design? Um, what if I told you that open source design is not really a thing? Uh, at least, not yet. Um, this is still a relatively new concept. It's still very young. And we're, um, I, I believe currently we, uh, we have the opportunity to shape the future of design and that open source design is the way that we can do that. Um, and so that may make you, make you feel one of two ways. You may feel a little bit scared and want to hide, or it might make you excited of like saying, yes, let's do this. Let's help take design into the future. Um, if you're feeling a little bit scared, um, today, I'm hoping to talk to you about what open source design means to us um, and to uh, the team that I work on. And now it's important to note that this might look different for your team. Everybody's makeup is very different. Uh, everybody has different constraints. Um, so this might look different for your team. And so um, a little bit about uh, what I work on. So I'm on the product uh, called Visual Studio Code. Uh, in a quick show of hands, how many of you know what Visual Studio Code is? Oh, a decent amount. Um, and how many of you use it in your everyday workflow? It's a lot more than I thought. Awesome. Um, for those of you who don't know what Visual Studio Code is, it's a lightweight code editor. Um, it's free and open source, and it runs everywhere, so it's cross-platform. Um, and it's only been around for about four years so far. And in the last couple of years, we've actually um, become one of the most popular tools for developers. Um, Stack Overflow's survey from last year uh, rated as one of the top choices for that. And last that we checked, we had about 9 million monthly active users, um, which is a lot for our small team. Um, and so, as Nico mentioned, our team is actually quite small. We have about 30 people in total. We have 23 developers, three product managers, one designer, one researcher, and one writer. So we're really small, and we deal with a lot of users on a daily basis. And to add to that, um, our team is split up geographically. Half of us are in the US in Seattle, and the other half is in Switzerland in Zurich. And so it really forces us to have to communicate well. Um, and one of the ways that we are able to do that is through um, open source. Um, and the team really uh, has a strong culture of open source. And, and so what, what does that really mean? So for our team, our source code is up on GitHub. You can download it. We have instructions on how you can build it and run it. And we also publish our roadmap for the year. So this shows you what's our focus for the year. Um, it allows the community to really have an idea of what we're going to be working on. And every single month, we have uh, what we call monthly iteration plans. So we have a release every single month. We post what we're going to work on. And as we make updates, the community can be involved in that. And we also have issues that are tied to the work items. And so the team has this strong mantra of having a zero distance to the customer. And what does that really mean? Well, anytime somebody goes and submits an issue or a bug, um, into the product that goes and gets assigned to a developer automatically. And so uh, the community is able to then have that conversation with the developer, um, and we're able to have a shorter distance between the customer and the developer. Um, and the community members are also able to then upvote issues that are feature requests. So this, this allows us to gauge the interests of the community, and this factors into our roadmap for the year. And, and on top of that, the community is then able to comment and give us additional feedback on what they think a certain feature should look like and just a, a additional feedback. And so we started thinking, this is great. How can we start to apply this to our design process? And so that led us to the state of design inside of the product. And so at this point, um, the design has sort of felt like we were a little bit on the outside. Developers had a really strong relationship with the community, but design wasn't really part of that. And so. This all started when we were working on designs for a, a, a new feature, and I was talking to one of the engineer managers, and I said, hey, like, it would be great if we could have feedback from customers on these ideas um, in a much quicker way. And the manager simply said, well, why don't we just post it on GitHub and see what people say? And this completely blew my mind. I did not know that that's something that we could do, that we can openly share our concepts at such an early stage. And so 
that's what we started to do. We started to track all of our design work inside of GitHub. We tried to uh, outline all the goals that we were trying to accomplish and showed concepts of what we we're trying to do to get feedback. And so the community was able to give us feedback. People from our own team was also able to comment on, on them. And so we had a single thread of feedback from both the community and our team. And so this allowed us to update our design process, which looked something like this, where you start with learning and understanding the problem, and then you define the scope, um, and then you ideate and explore, and build and test, and then you get feedback from the, from the customers. So with this new way of working, it allowed us to move that feedback loop, or shorten the feedback loop uh, between our ideation phase. And so as we're able to get more feedback quicker from the community, we're able to ideate and iterate together. So as we would take feedback, we would then post them onto that same GitHub issue to then continue to iterate together with the community. So what this taught us was that design mockups are really fast to make. Um, it takes a lot of time and effort to actually build out a feature as opposed to designing some ideas and just getting feedback. And that it's okay to post in progress work. Um, I know we have an obsession with pixel perfect design, and so having to be okay with something that is not quite finished doesn't quite sit right with us sometimes. So this was something for me to personally kind of get over. And, to, and the last one was to also know your audience. So for us on GitHub, we had mostly power users that were giving us feedback, and it was important to understand that power users give you a specific type of feedback, and we needed to supplement our feedback with other avenues like user testing or on Twitter and Reddit. And so we thought, this is great. Where can we begin to apply this to other areas? And so that led us into the next phase where we were trying to, you know, we started embracing open source design. We wanted then to involve the community more into this process. And so when we first started, um, we launched our new logo. Well, we didn't launch. We had our new logo, which is the blue one on the left. We borrowed it from one of our sister products, and we just made it blue. But we needed our own mark to really stand out. And so we came up with a new design for it, and we just added it to the product, and we really didn't talk about it too much with the, the community. And once we launched it, everybody um, had a lot of things to say. Um, we had countless issues and tweets talking about how people were unhappy with our, our new logo. And we ultimately became another meme. Um, and when this happened, we had instant regret. Um, we thought, next time we do this, we do not do it this way. And so. Uh, last year, we had the opportunity to do uh, another brand refresh. And so once we came up with a new design and a new idea, we then decided to do things a little bit differently. So we opened up a GitHub issue. We posted all of the different concepts that we were working with, the reasons of why we were doing the, the things that we were doing, and what the problems we're trying to address. And then to have proposals of what we're trying to propose. And then lastly, but most importantly, we asked the community to give us feedback on that. And this really changed the dynamic on how we started working with the community. Uh, on top of that, we knew that GitHub users were specific users for us. And so we then started reaching out on Twitter and on Reddit, something that the team has not done before. And so this just opened, uh, opened up our audience even further. And once we got feedback from everybody, it was a little bit overwhelming. Um, this is what it looks like to me, uh, what, what it felt like responding to feedback. Any anytime somebody would give us a feedback, we'd get two or three more comments. And so we had to sort of pause for a second to let all the feedback trickle in. So we would get all the feedback, we would analyze it, and then we started to respond to some of the issues that needed to be addressed. And we kept the community up to date. So anytime that we had updates and, and we iterated, we post it in, back into that same GitHub issue. Um, and the response from the community was quite different from this time. Um, people really appreciated that we opened up the door to the community to have an input and to work and iterate together with them, not just to ask for feedback, but to actually integrate that feedback into the end product. And so the team was finally feeling a big sigh of relief, like we're actually doing something right this time. And so the things that we learned through this process was it was important to really open the door for a conversation with the community. It's very different to just put something out and hope people like it, and it's another thing to have a conversation and to actually get feedback. And to also look for the different themes in that feedback. Um, we started to categorize the feedback into different groups, and we got to an idea of whether something was positive or negative, um, and it helped us really gauge the interest from the community. And to also evaluate the feedback. Not everything that we got for feedback was actionable. Uh, we had to think, you know, how does this fit into our core goals and principles and um, the ultimate uh, goals of the product and the project? So we had to evaluate whether or not that feedback was actionable. And so we thought, this is great. Let's keep going. We have some strong momentum going here. And so as we started to involve the community, we wanted to take it to the next stage. And that led us to one of our biggest um, issues that we had to tackle, and that was our icons. 
Um, so a little bit of context here. Um, at this point, we had about three different icon styles from three different libraries. And so over time, we had a large library of inconsistent icons. And our users were really uh, uh, paying attention to, to this. And so one of our uh, main contributors to our project said, the icons are the worst part of the editor. They should really be taken more seriously. Um, and this started to add more stress to, uh, to a big mountain problem that we were trying to, to accomplish. And this is sort of the reaction the team was getting every time somebody commented on that same issue. And so we took that same process before where we brought in, we shortened the feedback loop between us and the customers and we ideated together with the community. So as we came up with our new designs, we had two specific styles that we nailed it down to and we really wanted to get feedback from the community. And so we posted an update into that issue outlining what we're trying to do, getting feedback from people. And we also reached out to Reddit and Twitter and to get more feedback into that. And so we started getting a lot of great feedback along that process. But we knew that we had to change it a little bit. And, and so for us, it was about getting it into people's hands as fast as possible. Um, we, what we learned before was it's really different to give feedback on something that's a static mock as opposed to playing with something. So we really wanted to get something that was as real as we can get and actually get somebody, get people working with it on their workflows. So we created a custom build to actually add these different styles and, and add the ability to toggle different styles on and off and then invite the community to give us feedback. And so as we started getting a lot of feedback, we started dropping the comments on all the different icons that we thought we had uh, feedback to iterate on. And so in the end, we had about 100 different comments in total. And once this process was over, this took, a, this took us about six months, and we finally launched our new icons. We tweeted it out, and the feedback was, was also very positive. Um, but one interesting thing to note was as we were iterating on this, there was a comment from one of our, our users that said, the new icons were quite unsightly. Both styles are much, much worse than before. And so this kind of, we, we started seeing a, a similar thread here, and we had to do some more additional user testing to figure out like what is the problem that people have with these. So we waited for the feedback, we waited, and then two weeks later, that same person came back and commented and said, actually, after getting used to them, the icons seemed better overall. So the team was feeling really great after this. Um, you know, we had six months of going back and forth with the community, people really liking it or really hating it, and so it was really great to finally get people um, you know, getting used to and adjusting to the new UI. And then when we were done, we actually open sourced the icons. We published them on the Figma community page um, just to kind of give back to the community and allow people to reuse them um, in whatever way that they like. And so for us, the big things that we learned here was understanding that moving the cheese. And anytime that you do any sort of UI updates, people are going to have a knee jerk reaction. So it's important to wait and figure out, you know, after people have adjusted to them, then try to see what the feedback is, because it does take some time to get used to. And to seek out a diverse input. For us, it was about reaching out to other communities like Twitter and Reddit, where we had a different set of users giving us additional feedback. Um, and also knowing when to respond. When you have a large influx of feedback, especially when you have tweet storms, if you have a lot, a lot of followers on, on Twitter, it's important to sometimes take a pause and, and collect the feedback before you respond. And so looking forward, you know, talking about what the future of open source design is, we first started talking, or the first question that I asked was, what is open source design? And hopefully after today, you're able to get a little bit of a glimpse of what it meant for us. And for us, it was about designing in the open, being transparent with the community, and asking for feedback and iterating together and collaborating with the community. And to also shorten that feedback loop into our ideation phase. But not just in that phase, but that applied to every single stage in our design process. And so I'd like to take a moment to look at what other, how others are embracing open source design and what that looks like for other people. JetBrains recently launched a new typeface for developers called JetBrains Mono. Um, it's free, it's open source. The community had a big positive reaction to this. And then, um, so it was great to really see something that was made specifically for developers you know, be open source that applied to design. Cole from GitHub has a uh, open source icon library called Feather, which is great. And they he even set up a uh, NPM package if you uh, want to include it into your source code. So it was great to have this, this large set of li uh, library of icons. And Katarina um, has Undraw, which is a open source illustration library, and also has this really great tool to change the colors dynamically, and you can copy out the SVG or PNGs. And lastly, we heard about this already this week, that Twitter Design launched their, uh, or open source their Twimojis um, and put it on the Figma community page, which was really great. And so now I ask you, what does open source design look like for you? 
And maybe it doesn't look like opening it up on GitHub. Maybe it's about having a blog post and talking about your design process and upcoming changes. Or maybe it's seeking out customers on Twitter via a, a survey or publishing things to the community page. Um, so I invite everybody here to come help us shape the future of design and be part of the community and help push open source design into the future. And hopefully after today, you're feeling uh, inspired to want to be part of it. So thank you, everybody. Um, if you have any additional thoughts on open source design or VS, VS Code, um, come talk to me. Um, and you can follow me on, on Twitter or on Figma. So thank you.